All right, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going over the basics of Photoshop on the iPad here in 2020, doing a really fun project I do with my entry-level digital students that looks like this. It's birds with arms. It's a really simple photo collage that is really goofy. It's an easy way to learn and acclimate yourself to the tool. So if you're new to Photoshop entirely, or just new to Photoshop on the iPad, it's gonna be a uh, real quick and, and easy but fun. So when I teach this to my students, I kind of rank the quality of these in three levels. Level one, we got our little friend right here, right? It's a random bird with a random set of arms. The bird doesn't need to relate too much to the arms. It's just goofy either way. So that was level one. Level two, I think, is a little bit more interactive where you're more considering what the bird is doing and how the arms are reflecting what the bird is doing. So here we got someone who kind of like, you know, found two birds fighting, so they photoshopped two birds fighting. Level three, so where you're doing even more than just the arms and the bird, where you're actually like giving the full torso or they're holding something, or maybe you start photoshopping multiple images, like this homie has a hat right here. I like to try to get kids to be around the uh, level two area. If you know what you're doing, make something level three. Regardless, it's gonna be cool. Um, I'm actually real excited that uh, I am recording this on the iPad right now because I'm using a new tool that Mr. Bick has just got in the department. It's this guy, this little overhead camera right here. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. And let's get started on the iPad. So, see, there we go. So, um, Photoshop on the iPad, let's go ahead and open this up. I'm using an Apple Pencil. You do not need it. We're not gonna use the pressure sensitivity today. Um, in class today, I was using one of these guys, like the little rubber, you know, like the dollar store, uh, the dollar store styluses, you can even use your finger. I might switch to my fingers at some point. The photos that I found for this one, uh, I found a photo of a macaw flying here. I'll show those real quick. I found a photo of a macaw flying, because I really like macaws. And then I thought, like, hey, it'd be hilarious if it had, like, a, you know, the Superman arms, like, shooting out flying in a Superman cape. So I found this image. Why these two images work really well together is if you notice their torso, the torso of the macaw, is facing the same general way, close way, as the torso of Superman. It makes her life kind of easier. So let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. In Photoshop, rather than making a new document, we're going to import and open this option down here. You can also click on it right up here. And we're going to start with the photo of a bird. Don't take too long to find your photo of a bird. It doesn't matter. We're just having fun. So now, if I zoom out a little bit, I've got this photo of the macaw here. Um, it's looking nice. Over here, I have my layers palette, or my more complicated layers palette. I can double tap on where it says layer zero, rename the layer if I want to, all that good stuff. If I click on this little eyeball right here, I can hide or reveal it. Anytime in Photoshop that you see a black, or I'm sorry, a gray and white checkerboard, you can kind of see it on the iPad there with this camera. Anytime you see this checkerboard, that means nothing's there. But this is not where we're st stopping. We need to go ahead and insert a new photo. So. The new photo button down here right by the uh, the text tool. Insert another photo. Let's bring in my photo of Superman. Now when you insert a photo into uh, Photoshop on the iPad, you get this blue bounding box with these white dots. If you're going to scale an image, you want to scale from one of the corners, not from the side or the top or bottom. If you scale from a corner, it stays proportion with itself, but if you scale from the side, oh man, Superman's getting all stretched out. We don't like that. We don't want that. That doesn't look good. Let's undo. Scale them up. We can rescale later if we need to. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done and boom. So, I see I've got two layers, Superman and the macaw. Again, if I want to, I can hide the layers. But what I wanna do now is I wanna select Superman's arms and then mask them out using a layer mask. So, the first step, I've got my selection tools over here. This first one right here is the lasso tool if you wanna just draw any random shape and select it. If I click on it again, I've got a few more options. Select subject is really cool. It's kind of new in Photoshop. But this tool that I'm going to show right now is the brush selection tool, which is also known as the quick selection tool. Grab that guy. Now, this little menu right here, we have some options. I can add to my selection. I can subtract from a selection I have made. I can change the size of the brush that I want to select with. You can see over on Superman's chest, it's raised and lowered. I want to keep that around like 30 for my purposes. It might be different for yours. Um, and then I can change the hardness or the softness of the brush. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And then with the Add a Selection tool, I'm going to click and drag. And I'm just making like little swiping motions, right? Little like kind of like dragging motions. And boom, I've got most of Superman's arm selected. Let's go ahead and select his other one. 
Okay, now I got a little bit more, uh, but let's go ahead and grab the whole S too. I think it'd be kind of cool. But let's say I accidentally selected too much. Let's say I accidentally selected a little part of, say, his face, um, and I don't want his face. That's where this uh, little subtract selection tool comes in. I click on this guy, and then I can subtract from the selection I have made. We will be able to edit this whole selection later, this whole mask later, so have no fear if it's a little rough right now. That's generally it. I might patch some stuff up later. But now that I have his arms made, let's clean this up a little bit. There it is. Now that I have his arms selected, we're going to create that layer mask. The layer mask button is right over here, this little uh, white rectangle with a gray circle on it. If I click on this when I have a selection made, it masks out anything that wasn't selected. It's still there. Look at the layer. The layer itself now has this little like white circle next to it, and I can swipe left or right on that thumbnail to see the Superman thumbnail or the layer mask thumbnail. So if we see that white shape in there is the exact same shape as the arms, and anything black is hidden. So I can hide the layer mask to see the Superman again. And then I can even grab the transform tool over here and move that whole layer around and reposition it. Now I'm seeing a few things as I'm like rescaling and positioning. The first thing that I'm seeing is I got like a little bit of residue of his, uh, of his head up there. The second thing that I'm seeing is my macaw's beak is now behind the arm and it would actually be in front of the arm. So let's go ahead and hit done on the transformation. And now we're going to edit or change the layer mask itself. So with the layer mask selected, this is the layer, this is the layer mask. I want the layer mask selected, the black and white over here. If I grab my brush tool with that layer mask selected, right below the selection tools. Now I have black and I have white. I can flick between these two if I want to. But if I paint with white, I'm going to reveal part of the image. If I paint with black, I'm going to hide part of the image. So check this out. I'm going to go ahead and increase my brush size a little bit. I like my brush for uh, this process to be not 100% hardness, but maybe around like 70% somewhere in that vicinity. Now again, I'm going to paint with white and watch. I can reveal parts of the image undo that. If I paint with black, I hide parts of the image. Undo that. So I'm going to zoom in, and this is where my, I can do some detail work. Let's shrink my brush to be a little bit more manageable. With black, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, clean up the edges to the Superman S, maybe clean up the edges of the arm a little bit. Um, this is where I can, you know, clean up anything extra. So I see this like weird residue on his forehead right here. I can clean that up. Not bad. So, this beak is a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the arm where I should be able to see the beak, and I'm going to hide a little bit more just so I can see the edge of the beak. You might have a different problem like this on yours. Maybe, you know, something else is in the way. Now I'm going to flick back to white, shrink my brush up a little bit more. Not too bad. There we go. Zoom in and do some detail work. Again, I am not using the pressure sensitivity of the Apple Pencil. I could literally use my finger for the same job. Um, so in this case, it is not the tools, aside from Photoshop and the iPad, that are going to make you. Just doing a little bit of detail work, flick back to, uh, to bring back some of the beak, and I'm looking like I'm in a good place. If I zoom out, hey, there we go. So from here, you can hit the little share button. Um, quick export, you can, snare the sh the, you can share the snapshot of your uh, finished result. Um, you can save it to your, uh, you can save it to your contacts, or save it to your photo roll, or you can, uh, from here, you know, send it to any other app. For us, you might be sending it to, uh, you might be sending it to Notability or what have you. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and switch back to the face cam so you guys can see me again, or I can at least, like, send you off. Um, pretty easy tutorial, I think. The very basics of Photoshop on the iPad. Uh, thanks for watching.